Hello to my wonderful Jewel Diamond Taylor Do Not Give Up community. You know, I'm always finding interesting people and there's no accidents, I believe. I believe that God is a God of strategy and I'm here in Arizona about to speak for a wonderful women's conference, but there's a conference going on right here in Sister Alice's home and I'm sitting here with Sister Rose Muhammad. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Yes, ma'am. You're um, welcome. It, I, I'm almost speechless. Um, we were just talking casually at the kitchen table downstairs and realized that we have something in common, something that really we don't want to have it in common, but it's real. Yes, ma'am. And that is that we both um, have our sons have passed on. And you know, it doesn't really matter how long ago it was. It always feels like it was yesterday. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And, um, you know, both of our eyes are, are full right now because we've been sharing and exchanging our stories yes, and our pain. And I want to thank you, Rose, because I know it's so fragile. I know that you've also just recently lost your mom. Yes, ma'am. And yet you're willing to sit here and talk with me because I believe someone will watch this and be blessed and encouraged. Mm -hmm. Because what I found, Sister Rose, is that our society does, does not teach us how to deal with grief, right. how to deal with loss. Um, you and I talked about how people around us don't know how to talk to us. Don't understand. It, mm -hmm. it can be awkward and, and people want to kind of give you some cliches and, and just kind of dismiss it because they're not quite sure what to say. Mm -hmm. But I felt your heart and it's because my heart is broken. Yes. And I, I just want to give honor to your son. What was your son's name? Dion. Dion. And can you tell us as much as you can about how you lost your son Dion? Yes, ma'am. Well, on the night of May 3rd, I received a phone call from my mother, and the phone just kept ringing and ringing. And I'm like, I told my husband, I said, somebody trying to get in contact with us, mm. get the phone. And so he's, it's, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, and he's searching for the phone. And then, um, then my mother she just started crying. Mm. And he was like, Mother Lois, Mother Lois. He's from the islands. Oh. And he was like, Mother Lois, Mother Lois, what's wrong? And she she could not get the words out. So my stepfather, Richard, he took the phone from my mother and I kept hearing her screaming, saying, mm. Dion, Dion. Mm. I'm like, well, what is going on? Mm. And then my stepfather told my husband, he said, Dion is gone. I'm like, gone where? Mm, mm. Um, he was in Baton Rouge um, at his apartment. And um, he fought, well, I kind of felt like I really didn't want him to go to Louisiana. He was my only son, only my son. only child at that time. I was a single parent for so long. Mm. I've been so you married. really bonded. Oh right. my God, that yeah. was... Yeah. Oh my God, we understood each yes, other, yes. and oh, he was like six feet tall, and I'm five oh two, and I'm just like, boy, I will stand on a chair. <laughs> it's like, mom, mom, stop. But but the bond that we had yes. was so amazing, mm. and so my stepfather was like, Dion is gone, and I kept saying, where's he gone? Where is he? And so. He said he was murdered. I'm like, murdered? Mm. And after that, I could not understand what they were saying. And I was yeah. like, he's dead. And then I, I remember just crying, like, cover my baby up. He's cold. Oh. He's cold. And here you were in California. I in was California. in California. And he was yeah. in Louisiana. Yeah. And just a thought of my child being somewhere where I couldn't, couldn't get, get to him. I couldn't get to yeah, him. Yeah. And so my parents was the closest to to him, which was maybe an hour and 45 minutes oh, away. Oh, okay. So they trying to get there and um, I'm like, yo, help him, help him. Yes. Go what help a helpless him. helpless feeling for you. Such a helpless feeling. And still to this day now, it's it's still a helpless feeling mm -hmm. because you picked up on my story. Well, not so much my story, but you felt the energy. The energy was the same. Now, I knew that um, that you had lost your son, but 
when I saw you, I'm like, oh my God, Miss Jewel Diamond Taylor. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to say anything about her son because yes. I just don't know, one, how he passed, right. and two, yeah. how you feel how about it. About, yeah. But it's been 12 years for me. Mm. And with 12 years, and I understand that it's two years for you, but it seems like it was just yesterday. Yeah. Just yesterday. It was that yesterday, but the thing that got to me, your story, it just has so many layers to it, Sister it does. Rose. Because you're telling me that you have a beautiful grandbaby. You're yes. telling me we were downstairs because I was having this headache. And you said, oh, that's why your blood pressure is going up. Because I had been revisiting, you know, pictures of my <gasps> son and videos of my son. <gasps> and then to find out that Sister Alice knew my uh -huh. mom. And uh -huh. even though my mom's been gone 30 years, it just opened up a door, a flood of emotions that someone actually knew her, so I'm not crazy. My mother uh -huh. was really here. Uh -huh. But for you to say that the grandbaby you're taking care of was in the womb of the woman who killed your son. Right. She was five months pregnant, pregnant with, you. with my son's child. But my son, Dion, at that particular time, when it happened 12 years ago, I have a daughter, Kira, mm -hmm. who is um, who will be 19 this year, but before his death, um, he told Kira, he said, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you a gift. Wow. And she was like, okay. He said, when I see you, I'm going to give you a gift. Uh -huh. But she never got to see him again. And when we told Kira that Dion was no longer yeah. with us, the first thing she said was, who's going to give me my gift? Who's going to give me my gift? Not knowing that the gift is my granddaughter. That you raised. That I am, we are co-parenting her. Okay. Because in the state of Louisiana, there, there was a law that passed 30 days before we went to family court because mm -hmm. I tried to get full custody of her. Mm -hmm. And we went to court. And they stated that we just changed the law 30 days ago, which is called the Bajoron Law. Hmm. And the Bajoron Law uh, states that if you have a sibling, you cannot separate the two. You, you cannot separate the children. So she had to stay with her brother and her other grandmother because the law had just passed that they could not separate. So the judge said, well, we cannot split this child in two. You two parents, grandparents, is going to have to come together. But at that particular time, it had just happened. Yeah. Everything had just happened. Mm. And she's like defending her child. Her child. And You're I, mourning yours. I'm mourning mine, but I'm like, I know my child. I know that he would not put his hands on her. Mm. But for some reason, they was in the conversation, they was in an argument, and there were two people, three people in the room. It was, her name is Oceana. I call her the murderer because that's all I know. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, take your time. So the fact that you're in such a darkness, not knowing things, what happened, what he felt, what he said. He said, can I just say that? Yeah. Because it was according to her, because my sister lived in the back apartment and he lived in the front apartment. And she stabbed him in the judgment bay and he suffocated on his own. Blood. And when it happened, he said, look at what you've done to me. Mm. Look at what you've done to me. And he tried to go out the door, and he collapsed. And she, she called the paramedics at that time. Mm -hmm. And But first she called her mother and told her mother she's on her way to jail because she just hurt someone. And now she's being released. She was released on April 13th, just this past Wednesday. Oh my God. 
So we've got layers here. We've got Stop domestic it. abuse. We got forgiveness. We've got gun control. No, not gun because this was a knife. It was a knife. She stabbed. So, so what, was there any drugs involved? Was it just? It was just. I'm glad you said that because when at the time of my son's birth, I knew his weight and his length. Uh huh. When he passed. I, no drugs was in his system. Good. No alcohol was in his system. I can literally tell you the last thing he ate. Mm. I can literally tell you how much fluid he had in his body. Because once they give you the autopsy report, it gives you everything. My everything God. that was in his system. Now I'm talking now, about her. I don't know. I, there was I, not a I, mental issue? Uh, okay. I don't know. Okay. Don't I don't know, know because yeah. I have not spoken to yeah. her. In 12 years. In 12 years. Now, 12 you also years. said that a young man was in the room. Who, who was the young, the, the young boy that witnessed this? The young boy that witnessed it was Oceana's uh, five-year-old son. Now, Oceana is the girl that murdered, that murdered my son. Oh, and uh -huh. so she already had a son. She already had a son. And he was how old? A five. So he's His been traumatized. Is Xavier, and he's actually, he's stuck in that that time that moment that moment he he's still there to this day because all he talk about is Dion he would go to school so he's a motherless child and a fatherless child he's a motherless child well not a fatherless well, because this father, is by another sir. father this is by yeah. another father and he would go to school and he would see y'all don't see Dion standing there and the teacher would oh. call the grandmother and say who is Dion? Who is Dion? And then the mother, uh, the grandmother had to tell the teachers who Dion was. So, so my son mm -hmm. played a huge part, even though he he had only met Oceana. He didn't know her long. Oh my goodness. He met her in December of uh, two thousand and three, mm -hmm. May third, two thousand and four. He was deceased. Has this young boy gotten any treatment? My gosh. So that's why I say there's so many layers of tragedy in this story. And and we don't have a lot of time, but I'm just so grateful. Um, do we need to cut? Okay, let's cut for a moment.